So this is the cupboard we're working in today. You can see we've got the tea and coffee in the right place, but obviously no electricity to work any of it. We've got a couple of boards to swap. I'll show you out the uh, meter cabinet just through this wall here. Fortunately, there is a bit of a tube through so we can replace these tails. But we're dropping into these two boards and this is from an older setup when we would have had um, storage heaters. So if you see inside the, the case in here, you can jiggle it out. It's, uh, I forget you in the right light, you see they've got the old storage heaters and they've been blanked off or converted to sockets. Somebody at some stage, because this one's the storage heater board, has wired in a shower onto this board. So obviously we can pop that into our new board as well. Anything that's now obsolete we can just disconnect and uh, make safe. We've got this other consumer unit over here. Now this was an interesting one because it has um, a lid on it like this. So if I pop that in and you can't actually see any of the breakers or anything inside it, sorry the fuse wires, without removing this front cover. You see in there we've got um, the immersion, cooker, lights and plugs. So it's quite a basic setup. You see in there, if you do need to get access to replace these fuse wires, so again they're in these little carriers here, then you do need to be in and amongst the live parts. So it's one of those where you switch the main switch off. This is how these things would have been worked on by the actual operator of the electrical system, not just an electrician to replace a fuse wire. Equally with this one, you see you've got the colour-coded carriers, and again, you have to turn the power off before you remove them because they've got these long prongs on and if you get yourself on the wrong side of them you get a nasty electric shock if you look at the top here as well when we talk about eddy currents generally it's not an issue on single phase installs to be totally honest but we shouldn't be doing it and you can see they've gone in straight through there the load's that low that it's it's an unlikely to ever have been a problem and the installation's certainly not showing any signs of it being a problem but that's um that's what we're faced with. So we're going to strip these out, make sure we've got everything where we need it to be and pop our new consumer unit on the wall. And I'll show you that process in the next section of this video. So we're going to go for this Verso board. You'll see here I've got a new mini RCBO. So if you look here, single polar neutral, 30 milliamps. If you look on the wiring diagram on the side of this one, it shows the neutral opens, which is brilliant. I've also got the AFDD here and an older size RCBO just to show you the difference. So these are properly mini, I'd say that's a similar size to an MCB. Again, you've got your torque values on top, 6KA rating, and this one's B32. But we're going to get this dressed into the board. We'll stick it on the wall in the cabinet, draw some new tails through to outside. I've managed to get a little bit of length, but that's about as much as I can get away with. I've got these other cables here that are coming in um, from different directions, so we're going to have a bit of fun dressing everything into this board. But we'll make a neat, tidy job of it. Nathan's going to give us a hand in a minute. And um, yeah, we'll get on with this now. So you can see we've got the board in now. Nathan's done this one, so he is now in his second year of his apprenticeship. He's done a really tidy job there. You'll see we've got the earths all coming into the back. We've got the neutral fly leads in, and we have got our final circuits looped straight over. Obviously, we're working with the lengths we've got, so we've not extended these in terms of the line and neutral. We have had to extend a few of the CPCs, but it was to make sure we haven't got unnecessary joins just to make a board look neat and tidy really no need to do it and you can see the benefit here i've popped an old rcbo in just so you can see the height difference and we've managed to get this final circuit into the mini rcbo there where we wouldn't have done that on these older variants we would have had to have extended it because they just weren't long enough lots of entry holes into this so you can see under the neath here we've got the glands so we're in there's loads of other knockouts too so you've got lots of options we're still tidying up a little bit here we've got our bonding to sort out you'll see that floating in mid air and we have got a reasonable distance from the, the gas meter. It's as far as we're going to get in this kitchen cabinet. There's just no more room where the circuits are coming through. And again, we don't want unnecessary terminations. We're further away than when we started. And it is just what it is when you're working with stuff that's existing. I'm sure you all know what I mean for those of you who are out doing the do. But yeah, full credit to Nathan, I think. Silver plated um, bus bar. We've got the AFDD to drop in. Um, on our final circuit there in a minute but we're going to run through the dead tests we'll get all this labeled up and we'll show you it in just a second so you can see we've got this isolator switch here which we've had in the off position just connected these tails up we're all done inside now so we can get the power restored and do some of the live testing and see if this installation is going to come back together quite nice but always handy when you drop in the meter cab and you've got one of these sat there waiting for you it's a big bonus and as i said we've updated these tails luckily we had a tube through can see that there we've got our main air through as well 
into the head. So we've got all new sails through to here and a new consumer unit inside. So circuits are all labelled now, we've got our main switch down that end, the RCBOs are all in. Some pushing blanks because we're waiting for some of the DIN rail verso ones and we didn't want to um, leave it unmismatched. So we're all in and all safe there, SPD down at the end. We're just going to run through some testing and hopefully that all comes back clear and we can sign this one off as done. So before we get into having a chat about the gas meter in relation to its position to the consumer Unix, I do want to cover that on this video. I thought it'd be a good example to share because we all face these challenges when we're out on site trying to retrofit new equipment onto older systems. And you can take the approach of extending cabling and moving stuff. We didn't have that luxury in this case because wherever we put it, Within the cupboard we were working, we would have ended up a similar distance away from the gas meter anyway. So we made the decision to work with what we've got. We'll have a little chat about that in just a sec. But I wanted to mention the Verso Mini RCBO, and it really is mini. I've got the spares here. So you see we're keeping stock of these now because we do install a lot of Verso gear anyway. But the test buttons are a little bit smaller. It really is a big difference to the old RCBOs that Verso stocked. And it just gives more wiring room. I know there's the argument with the taller, you've got a bit more space to hide your cables away behind um, the RCBOs, but for us it's just nicer to be able to bend your conductors in. And we had a benefit of that on this job where some of the cables were entering from the bottom of the consume unit and rather than having to extend them, we was able to get them straight into the RCBOs. So it's maybe not making as neat a job as you could do in terms of the appearance, but electrically I'd consider that a better way of doing it and you've now got that option with the Verso stuff. They don't come with the instruction manual in the box and I'm sure that's an effort to reduce any waste. So this again is cardboard packaging, fully recyclable. Um, there's no plastic bag in there or anything. I have printed out the sheet so it kind of defeats the object but I wanted to show this on the video. Obviously I wouldn't be printing these out in the real world. I'd be looking at them digitally on the Verso website. Um, but they are single pole and switch neutral and again if you want to go and check that out on the Verso YouTube channel Will explains that really well exactly what that means for their product. Um, these are rated 240 volts, they're in a range of 6 to 40 amps. This one was the type B tripping curve, gain 6KA, type A 30 milliamp and they comply to 6009-1 so that's your RCBO product standard. Really nice, I like it, the price point's good as well. Um, we're going to be using these on a few of our domestic jobs going forward. We've recently switched over to using Verso on a, a lot of our smaller domestic works. And um, yeah, we wouldn't be recommending it if I didn't think it was decent gear. As I say, Will sent this in to us for free, which was very kind of him. He didn't need to do that. I was quite happy to pay for it, but he was adamant. So there you go. So for what it's worth, we've been provided this for free, but it gets a thumbs up from me. Now moving back to the gas and the consumer unit. There's a few conflicting opinions around this. If you have a little read around some of the technical articles you'll find over on Google, um, the actual standard that applies to it is BS6891, and that's a, a gas industry standard, I guess. Um, and the general consensus seems to be you need to be 150 millimeters away from um, a consume unit on main, main switch gear. However, I did read an article on Professional Electrician, I think it was a Napit Code Breakers one, where they suggested that consume units aren't part of that um, and they fall more into the category of being 25 millimeters away from pipe work. But that does seem to be at odds with some of the other stuff I've read around interpretation of BS6891. Um, so 150 mil, and as you'll see in the pictures that follow this chat, we got to 200 mil from the top of the meter and the pipe work, and that was off the bottom face of the consumer unit. I wasn't trying to fiddle it and get it in a way that it looked like it was far enough. So I think we just about ticked that box. It still is a tight space to get into. Obviously, if you have a problem with that gas meter, you are still quite close to the consumer unit. There's no getting away from it, but from a technical point of view, we are far enough away. And equally, if the consumer unit has a problem with it and you've got to work on the gas system, having those things close together never really sits well with me. And I think we've moved away from times like that in the past where we are getting that um, suppliers that's kind of thinking of that now. So we've got good separation of water, gas and electric, whereas before they'd all kind of end up coming up under the stairs or under a kitchen cabinet together, just where they brought all the utilities into a building, I guess, where it was easy. Um, but yeah, it's one of those, like I say, I'm not a fan of extending cables just to try and move something somewhere else. 
it's an extra point of maintenance and somewhere else you've got to check in the future a point of potential failure. Um, we could have used a, a junction box such as a um, steel box with where a wig or whisker thin rail terminals in there but even saying that you've still got all of those connections within that enclosure I don't make that any better than just putting the consume unit there either. When that property eventually gets rewired which it it will in the next maybe 10, 15 years or so. It's kind of at the end of its lifespan, I would say, that system. And the property at whole will go through a period of maintenance. Then it can be moved. You can tackle it at that stage. So I don't know what you think of our approach on that one. If you've got better suggestions or ideas of something we could have done, please do drop them in the comments below. Um, if you've got any questions around the Verso gear itself, again, get in touch. And if you want to ask any questions about some of the older switch gear, we're going to be showing some of that in the Apprentice One to One Academy soon. Because I think teaching people how these things work and maintaining them is perhaps something we're all forgetting along the years. I think maybe my generation in the, the 40 age bracket are probably the last that would have ever worked with those from the beginning. So it's going to be more and more rare for younger people to come across this old switch gear and know how it actually operates and to be able to work on it safely. So sharing a bit of content around that is something that I want to try and do. Otherwise, I will see you all on the next video soon. Thank you for watching.